If you do a lot of in-game screen recording, you definitely have to know about this. So go to your system settings, go into camera, and here, not only can you move the LED indicator, the little red dot that you'll see on your screen when you're recording, down here where it says landscape, this is where you can go in and get out of that traditional one by one square into something more reasonable of sharing, and that is full 1080p. Here you could also adjust the FPS rate, as well as the bit rate. The lower the bit rate, the less storage space it'll take up. In my opinion, this is the best setting, I think, because it's not only storage efficient, but also looks good enough to make content. And that's just one of the many more settings and some cool things that definitely enabled in the settings section if you have a Quest 3. I'm also gonna be covering the new features that got recently added for the Quest 3 in version 60. I like the capability to store more boundaries as well as more boundary settings you could adjust. So if you're excited for this video, make sure to hit that like button and turn on that cool new YouTube animation and subscribe for more Quest 3 content. So I don't know about you, but whenever I put my Quest down and it turns off, right when I just place the headset on, so now everything's black and I have to wait for it to turn back on, you can actually extend that time duration. So I highly recommend going into your system settings and go into power and right underneath automatic wake, where it says display off, here's where you wanna go in and to change that time duration if you wanna extend it. You can even extend it as long as an hour. But on the very bottom, here's where you will find the new extend battery life setting, which will allow you to actually extend the VR headset to give it the best battery life as possible. During those situations, you're just trying to squeeze as much juice as possible. Just keep in mind, enabling this will basically make your, your Quest 3 into a Quest 2 with lower resolution, lower refresh rates and such. So only do this if you really have to, like game night with all your fam friends and family. But if you can, I'll strongly recommend just plugging it into a USB-C to a power bank or something. Now boundary sensitivity, if you're just like me who you're not really a huge fan seeing the lines whenever you're just barely approaching the boundary limits, you can customize the sensitivity by going into the settings section and here tap on physical space. And in the physical space, you'll see boundary sensitivity. I like to personally keep it on simple because this little slide bar underneath is where you can go in and adjust in real time to see your personal liking when it comes to the boundary walls from interfering when you're gaming. You may also select advanced, which will give you more options to select from. So feel free to play with the sensitivities right here to find the best one for you. I personally recommend tinkering with it if you play a lot of AR games. This way you don't have the boundary lines constantly interfering, ruining the whole AR immersion. And also right above here is where you go in to change the boundary colors to your own personal liking as well. You only have three colors, unfortunately. Now, if you just recently updated to version 60, right above here, there's a new cloud-based boundary, which allows you to add as many more, more boundaries to the VR headset. Now, since this is new, the preference tab is highlighted, which if you click on, it will actually automatically take you to that tab. But if you don't see this, you'll be able to find this new add more boundaries to your headsets by going into this setting menu and select on privacy and go into the device permission and just go ahead and enable SharePoint cloud data. Now, from my understanding, images and stuff of your room isn't being shared, it's just the points. But by enabling this, allows two VR headsets to actually communicate with one another if they're in the same room playing AR games, as an example. From my experience, this works extremely well. And this is how you can add these two headsets to communicate with one another when you're playing virtual reality games with two players or more. You can find out more if you click on the link information that they have on the Meta headset. Now, I don't know about you, but I like playing video games with live captions, but instead of manually going into the video game that you're playing and enabling the captions there, the VR headset is advanced enough that it could create captions on the go. Whenever you're watching a YouTube video, movie, or even viewing a trailer or playing your games without fiddling with any settings. To enable this feature, you need to go into accessibility, which by the way, here is where you can also adjust the text size, your own personal preference under the vision tab. But you wanna go into the hearing tab to enable live captions. You'll find it right here, enable this, and now any vocals of somebody talking, the VR headset will automatically have a live caption popping up right there in the menu. And if you'd like to turn this off, you can also disable it in this little menu section as well. So it's an on-demand, 
live caption just like our smartphones nowadays have this capability and then if you want to if you go back you can also enable some games and apps to have this ability or not then if you thoroughly look even further you can also customize the caption size as well as colors now since we were recently talking about visualization there's no other way to get the best visualization clarity in vr gaming than purchasing prescription lens and that is where today's video sponsor vr wave comes into play the unique thing about vr waves is not only do they easily attach to your vr headset but they use these magnetic design which allows you to easily remove these without removing a whole adapter and allowing other individuals to also use your VR headset. And then when it's your turn, you can just attach them and bada bing bada boom, you can play in VR with clarity and no longer need to worry about your glasses frame hitting the lens and possibly scratching your VR headset. Their website will be linked in the video description down below. And I also got this promo code you guys could use to save some money. But the beauty about their website is not only do they advertise a phone number right on top to get a hold of the real in the visual in case you have any questions but their website is so easy to navigate and use that you can easily enter your prescription information and see your total cost right then and there vr waves also feature blue light filter as well as anti-glare all for an amazing affordable price tag so if you're looking for some prescription lens highly recommend checking out vr wave Another cool setting to definitely consider enabling is for those that like tracking their calories if you're playing a lot of high intense motion games like pistol whips or Beat Saber or even kickboxing games, then you'll definitely want to open up your app library and go down till you find the Move app. Here, just enter your current body information for the most accurate way to track your calories in case you don't have a smartwatch and you have the preference between viewing this information on top or the bottom. I like leaving it on top, but this is your calorie count on top that you can always view in the games. But if you'd like to remove this, if you're playing like a cinematic game, you want nothing to ruin the whole immersion, but going into this menu right here, just like the live captions, you could disable the move icon right here. But this is definitely a great way to make sure you achieve your calorie goal if you're using VR gaming for calorie burning. Now, I do sometimes use my VR headset for desktop office work. And because of this, having 120 hertz enable is kind of meaningless as there's not really much going on that's fast framing, especially when it comes to like text work. So to squeeze much battery life as much as possible without sacrificing the overall performance, go into your system settings go into system and on this first tab disable 120 hertz to squeeze up as much battery as much as possible when you're just using your vr headset as a three monitor display and then right here i should also mention here is your night display as you have the full adjuster right here to enable this is good to know in case you're playing games at night right before you're about to go to sleep so without disturbing your sleepiness i guess that's one way to word it depending on the level of sensitivity you enabled if you go on your little toolbar right here you can enable night mode right here and disable this automatically now for some bonuses you can find some bonuses in the private sensitivity because right here i do recommend at least overviewing this because there's some things here that does allow meta to receive photo data from your room environment to help them improve their developments. So if you don't like to be a part of this and you do like privacy, it's good to know if you go into your system settings and go into privacy and in the data and analysts, go ahead and read through this and disable the ones you feel comfortable in sharing and the ones you don't. You could just copy mine because I made sure I'm not sharing any photos or room images around my environment. I think that's just a little bit too much meta. Now, another cool setting to definitely enable is the Swift to type. Now, instead of just punching your keyboard, which is yes, you can actually do when with hand tracking, you could punch the keys to type in whatever you want. But if you go into experimental settings right here, you can enable the Swift to type. And just like our smartphone, you can easily Swift quickly to type whatever word you're trying to type in and it will auto correct it to make sure it's accurate and it's a fast method than individually typing in things. And those are the settings I highly recommend others to at least be aware of and enabled to have a good, pleasant Quest 3 experience. Now, if you're curious what type of decals I have on my Quest or other accessories you see on my VR headset, one of these end cards, I cover all my favorite accessories I have on my Quest, but in the description down below, I'll have a link to where you could get these cool decals for your VR. And right now there actually is a promo going on. If you buy two or more decals, if you want to experiment the look of your quest, you'll be able to save some money as well for these holiday deals.
All that and more in the description down below. But again, you can find out more in this dedicated video as well. Thank you so much for watching.